Um, well, the JS1C, um, having uh, bagged a few international competition medals, actually achieved the first wins at Benalla in both classes, the 18 metre class and open class, uh, this year in 2017, which was a, a nice plaudit for the company and a kind of nice um, closure of the dream when the story started quite a long time ago. Uh, because before they fir the first JS1 flew in 2008, there was a 10 year story leading up to that. And I think when, when the Yonker brothers set off down that path, had somebody said, well, in 20 years' time, your design will win two medals at the World Championships, they probably would have said, you're kidding. So it's a very nice end. Um, <coughs> the South African CIA awarded the type certificate to the JS1 in 2010. Um, the problem that occurred is that uh, South Africans and EASA don't really speak to each other. They, they've got um, a mutual distaste. Well, EASA has a distaste for the South Africans. And I understand that the reason is nothing technical, it's political, um, in that EASA won't speak to the South African CAA until the South African Ministry of Transport agrees the issue of the airline route licences with, with the European Parliament, which will never happen because countries like uh, the UK with airlines like British Airways that have the highest value routes, and they have three of them a daily to Johannesburg, are never going to give up their rights. So that will never happen. So they've reached a kind of impasse where EASA just wouldn't accept the type. But most countries in the world sign up to the ICAO convention, so they accept each other's um, aircraft can come and fly in their airspace as long as they're registered in the third nation. So the JS-1s have been flying uh, unrestricted in the UK and most other places since the South African type certificate was awarded on the South African registration, which is why you see so many in the UK with the ZS registration. Um, um, we operated perfectly well um, in that uh, Ian Evans and I uh, both have approvals <coughs> under Yonker Sailplanes AMO and we can uh, do the maintenance work on them. But we pretty much filled the market with people who are willing to fly on foreign registered gliders, if you like, and other people want to fly them on the European register. <coughs> um, so to get round this in seemingly entrapped intractable um, situation. JS have gone into a, a marketing and production partnership with M&D Flugzeugbau, uh, who are a German company with design and manufacturing approvals. Uh, they built, they design and built the Zambora motor glider and they, they make a lot of microlites in the factory currently as well. Um, and M&D have applied to, as the design authority, have applied to EASA for the type certificate. Now in the EASA world, the JS1C is known as the JS slash MD single, and that will be the name on the type certificate unless, <laughs> unless uh, some surprising news comes out when they finally issue it. Um, that type certificate is, um, that type certification process is currently underway, but it's very close to near the end of the process, and in fact, um, we would expect to hear a, a very positive announcement from EASA within really a matter of weeks now. The engine itself that the JS1 uses is the M&D TJ42 engine, which is a different engine to you've got in your Sharps here. Um, but the engine itself uh, got EASA certification in 2016 as an engine for self-sustaining sailplanes. And the significant thing is that M&D also have production approval. So they're not only allowed, not only has the engine got the type certificate, but they're allowed to produce them and issue form ones on the engine. So, how, um, when the EASA give the type certificate, we fully expect it to include the engine system under the type certificate as well. Um, so that's pretty much where the JS1 story, uh, JS1C story, is right now. Uh, currently, the factory is doing prototyping work on the JS1 self-launcher, which will use a Rotax engine on a binder system. Don't ask me to, to tell you which... You mean, so you mean a solo engine, not a Rotax? Sorry. Um, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. Solo engine on the... No, hang on, it is a Rotax. Solo engine, solo engine. <laughs> Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, ask Craig, he knows more about it than I do. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the solo engine on the binder system, that's right. And there's a, I know there's a carburetor version and an injected version. 
Um, now that should already be flying, but um, they uh, stopped all prototyping work on that after the Onka brothers didn't get selected in the 18 metre class for the World Championships just gone, and they decided to build a 15 metre class glider. So that kind of got shelved, but um, all the engineering and prototyping capability of the factory in Potchestrom is coming back to the JS1 self-launcher this month. And they're, they're predicting it will fly late this year. And there are a number of orders taken, and they, they're expecting to start customer deliveries from mid-2018. So that's the JS1 self-launcher. The JS1 self-launcher uses a redesigned fuselage because the existing JS1C fuselage won't take the engine behind the wing. So they've had to fatten the fuselage out in that area. But they say they've made aerodynamic improvements, which mean there's no disadvantage. So the fuselage will look slightly different. Um, I should say that the JS1C is available both as a pure sailplane and jet sustainer, uh, but currently there's no plan to produce a, anything with an electric motor, although I know they have had electric motor hubs down in the factory. There, there's no um, plan that I'm aware of. So it'll be a, um, an internal combustion self-launcher or the gas turbine or pure sailplane. Um, JS3 News, so the Yonker Brothers got selected for the, 50, for the 15 metre class for the World Championships and immediately thought they'd better set about building a new glider. So um, they, for a number of years they've been saying if they were starting out with a clean sheet of paper they could make the JS1 much better than it currently is in performance terms. So they thought this is their opportunity to do it. And it, started, it started off as a 15 metre glider they built the prototype incredibly fast. I was in Potchestrom um, in November to fly the Grand Prix when the wings weren't even in the mould yet, uh, but the fuselage, they got one fuselage um, joined and the other fuselage was in two halves. And from then to December, they finished the glider and flew it. Um, it flew in the 15 metre class at the uh, 27 World Gliding Championships. Um, I think it would be fair to say that perhaps the verdict's out yet, whether it's a really good 15 metre class glider, um, because I suspect it might not have enough wing area for Northern Europe conditions. It's a very small wing area, but potentially it's a very high performer. Um, they're they're going to fly it with the 18 metre wingtips this month. Uh, the wingtips are just about built, and they're about to be mated to the two prototypes. And... Um, they're expecting customer deliveries from mid-2017. Uh, the JS3 will be available as a pure sailplane or with a jet engine. There's no plan for a self-launcher. The fuselage is very much smaller than the JS1 fuselage um, in, in behind the wing. Um, and this time they've learnt their lesson from last time and they're doing the two certification process, South African and AASA, in parallel. Um, and the plan is that they'll certify it as an additional model under the existing JSMD single type certificate because it's all based on the same engineering assumptions. Um, so at the moment then they get uh, the product range is the JS1C which is an 18 metre slash 21 uh, which fly in the 18 metre and open classes and it's, a, and it's a very pure cell plane or jet sustainer. The JS1 self launcher which will be the redesigned fuselage with, I wrote Rotax there again, didn't I? Solo binder system. Um, and it, it's expected that in due course, the JS1Cs will be built with this new fuselage. So they've only got one fuselage set of moulds in the factory, but it won't happen immediately. And the JS3 1580 metre span, 50 metre and open classes. Now, if the boys aren't known for overcalling their performance predictions, and they're talking about a 58 to 1 glide angle 18 meter glider, um, which is pretty stunning as a um, competition glider.